Hi, my name is John Hall from Mower Magic, and I've been involved in the selling, supporting, and testing robotic mowers in the UK for over 18 years. Today, I'm going to be showing you a brand new robot platform from Ambrosio. It's called the 4.0 Elite, side by side with the Husqvarna 430X Auto Mower, which has been around for some time. Now, the 4.0 is a really interesting product. Not only does it look totally different to any other robot on the market, including the rest of the Ambrosio range, it's been redesigned from the ground up and has got some really amazing patented design features never seen before. The 4.0 is the start of what they're calling Next Line, a modular set of robots which can be upgraded to the customer's requirements uh, or in the future expanded to accept AI modules. And that's very exciting. So here we go. Let's compare some of the key features and components of the Husqvarna 430X and the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite Premium. Both of a rating is suitable for very large gardens, 3,200 square meters for the auto mower and 3,500 square meters for the Ambrosio. Okay, let's have a look at some of the exterior features of these two robots. And we'll start with the bumper mechanism on the 430X. So the two robots use totally different mechanisms for detecting a collision with an obstacle. The Husqvarna has a floating top cover, which is mounted on Hall effect sensors. The cover can move forward and backwards or side to side. Uh, so as the robot comes into contact with an obstacle, the cover is pushed back um, in either of these directions and that changes the direction of the robot's travel. The robot will reverse away and change direction. The cover itself is made from a, a good quality ABS. It's about 5mm thick at the front and has a, a, a rubber overlay uh, to give it a bit of protection. The uh, front of the robot features two uh, LED headlights for decoration and the charging contacts are located here on this nose. So as the robot drives into the base station, it picks up its charging voltage through these two copper contacts. On top of the robot, there's a large stop button. As you press the stop button, it also opens up the uh, cover for the display. There's a carrying handle located underneath the rear of the robot. So if you want to carry it from the garage or the shed or to another lawn, you can pick it up uh, through the rear. The only slight strange thing for me is when you, when you pick it up you're sort of pushing against the bumper springs but uh, it does the job just fine. Right let's talk about the 4.0 Elite. This has a brand new design of bumper I've never seen before on a robot. Uh, it has a 40cm uh, wide by 30mm thick reinforced EPMD soft touch bumper. It's got a, a large amount of travel, it's got 30 mil of travel and it's uh, mounted on a compression spring to allow it to decelerate slightly as it comes into contact with an obstacle. And the idea is that it protects items in the garden that it regularly comes into contact with. Uh, this robot is also equipped with uh, GPS obstacle mapping. So after the robot's touched uh, an obstacle in the lawn a few times, it will remember where it is and as it approaches it, it will slow down in advance so it very, very gently touches up against it. Uh, looking at some of the other exterior features on this robot, uh, there's a, a rain sensor uh, at, the, uh, at the back here, you can see there's a rain sensor, and um, the charging contacts are actually on the rear of this robot, because this robot does a, a pivot and reverses into uh, the base station, which is quite, quite different to anything I've seen before. And there's also a convenient folding on stainless steel carrying handle here, which clicks into this little recess. So you can take it out for carrying and, and lift it through there. The deck itself uh, features these rain holes and it allows rainwater to wash through the deck and help to clear debris and, and build up. Uh, again, that's a unique feature we've never seen before in a robot. Uh, and that, that rainwater can just filter straight through and help to keep the underneath the robot nice and clean. Right, let's talk about user interfaces and displays. And we'll start with a 4.0 Elite. Now on this machine the display is located underneath this rear cover. It's held down by two magnets and the power button is uh, located just here. This is a 5.5cm uh, by 9.5cm colour touchscreen display that's located at a 30 degree angle which makes it really easy to see and very clear in broad daylight. Uh, once you've turned the machine on you're prompted to enter your pin code and once the machine's warmed up, you can see various graphical options. Uh, and you can navigate in and out of the different menus just by touching the screen and selecting the options that you want. 
uh, you can set things like your, your weekly schedule or adjust the rain sensor sensitivity. You could add a delay to it, which so it allows time for the uh, grass to dry. And if you're not sure what any of the icons mean, you don't need to get the instruction book out. You just press the question mark button here and select uh, one of the icons that you want the explanation on and it will tell you clearly in English what that option means. So that's really useful um, and makes it a lot easier and user, more user friendly. From this menu you can adjust things like the height of cut. Uh, you can just go into the height of cut menu, uh, dial in the height that you want and you can hear the motor bringing the height of the blade up or down depending on what you've selected instantly which is a really nice feature on this model. Back on the home screen uh, you've got various other indicators across the top here. Here we've got uh, GP GPRS or mobile phone signal and this side we've got GPS so it shows that the robot is connected to the satellites. Uh, this is a Bluetooth indicator so when the robot is connected to the mobile app for updating the software or, or schedule uh, you can see it's connected and this is a battery level indicator and the exclamation mark tells you information about the robot like the software version, serial number, all that type of thing. So it's uh, really straightforward and easy to operate but very very powerful. The other truly remarkable feature on the 4.0 is the new flex deck. The actual front of the deck can twist in either direction and I'll go into that in a lot more detail later. OK, let's look at the Husqvarna 430X. The display on this model is located underneath this top cover. It's open by pressing on the stop button. The power switch is underneath the rear chassis of the robot. Now this robot features a black and white LCD, LCD display which is 3.7 centimetres by 6.5 centimetres with a blue backlight. Uh, the beep sound in a moment will indicate that the robot's booted up and ready for the pin number. And inside here you can see a traditional telephone style keypad and arrow keys and uh, selection and back buttons. Uh, you can go into the menu and adjust things like the schedule is operated in here and the height of cut can be changed uh, on this model in this menu as well. It doesn't take effect instantly once you select the height. The next time the, the robot is due to operate it will adjust the blade whilst it's uh, mowing automatically, it won't, it won't do it right in front of you uh, unless it's in the lawn. Now this system feels a little bit old-fashioned, a little bit outdated for a product of this price, however all of the settings can also be done via the mobile app which looking at this uh, interface I would probably say is the best option to do it through the app. Um, but uh, this just gives you an idea of what, what it looks like under here. OK let's talk about traction and we'll focus on the drive wheels. Now if you've got rough or undulating ground or sloping areas of the lawn uh, or perhaps you've got areas of the garden which remain wet because they're sheltered by trees you're going to need really good traction. It's important uh, to avoid turf damage or the robot getting stuck. Uh, shown side by side here we've got the Husqvarna 430X and the, uh, the drive wheels are made of a, a hard plastic which has got a very very thin coat of uh, rubber on it. The drive uh, treads themselves are small rectangular as studs. This robot doesn't come with any wheel cleaners as standard. You can purchase an accessory wheel cleaning kit uh, which I think is essential on a robot mower especially if you're operating them towards the autumn and you've got leaves on the ground there's going to be a lot of mulch and build up that uh, stick to the wheels so uh, having the ability to remove that is very very important to remain with good traction. Uh, the wheels on the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite are made of a soft flex rubber. This is an EPMD rubber and it's got um, a nice flexible feel to it with a, a thick tread uh, running all the way through it. The wheel is made up of two components bolted together. Now this is a self-cleaning wheel. As it revolves it runs on a flat spot which agitates any buildup of mulch or leaves and, and keeps it clear. They have an enormous amount of surface area contact which I'll show you in a moment uh, with the ground and you can actually get a spiked wheel accessory that fits between the two sandwich wheels which is also self-cleaning. As the wheel revolves the spike is pushed into the ground as the wheels flex back and as the wheel continues to move forward the, the spring back of the rubber cleans the spike 
that's a great accessory if you've got some extreme slope conditions. Okay, we're going to compare the wheel width on the two robots. We'll start with the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite. Um, on here we've got 66mm of uh, width on the rubber flex tyre and uh, we'll compare it with the Husqvarna 430X auto mower and here the width of the wheel is 32mm uh, 32mm on the Husqvarna 430X Right, let's look at the Husqvarna 430X wheel diameter and how much contact it has with the ground Okay, the diameter of the wheels on the 430X is 24 centimetres and the uh, contact area it has with the ground is 2.5 centimetres. So if you take the 2.5 centimetres times by the 3.2 that gives you 8 square centimetres of surface area contact. It's quite a small narrow wheel and I wonder if on block paving or uh, patios transitioning between lawns, whether that's enough, especially in wet conditions. Okay, now we're going to compare the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite wheel diameter and the surface area contact it has with the ground. We'll start with the uh, diameter of the wheel. Okay, it's uh, 26 centimetres on the diameter and the uh, contact it has with the ground. Uh, 6.5 centimetres of surface area contact with the ground. Times that by the uh, 6.5 centimetres of width, you've got a total of 45.5 centimetres of contact with the ground. That's square centimetres, 45.5 square centimetres of surface area contact, which is huge um, and should give very, very good grip in all conditions and regardless of the surface type. Right, looking at the wheels in more detail now, we've got uh, two of the rear drive wheels removed, uh, one from each of the robots, and we'll look at how they're attached to the robot, but also the materials they're made from and their grip on a, on a shiny surface like this table. So we'll start with the Husqvarna. The Husqvarna wheel for the 430X is made up of three parts. It's got the decorative uh, plastic hubcap, and on the back it has a dust cover which covers the centre of the wheel. It's just to keep debris from building up on the inside. Um, and it's an injection moulded wheel with plastic clips which hold the dust cover in place. There's three plastic clips which uh, click that on there. Now the way it attaches to the actual robot and drive is transferred from the gearbox to the wheel is uh, this friction plate here. So uh, this, uh, this section of the wheel is pressed up against the outer ring of the drive shaft here. There's a 15mm centre core and then there's um, a drive uh, plate there with little ribs on it and the wheel is attached using a nut and washer which press, um, press the wheel against that shaft and uh, so the drive is transferred onto this plate. So on a, on a shiny surface um, or a hard surface maybe like concrete or paving or slabs um, there's, there's very, very little grip with this type of uh, sort of hard plastic um, and these uh, little tangs will dig into the turf uh, fairly well but on, on hard standing transitioning between lawns uh, there's definitely not quite as much grip there or, or in wet conditions. It's quite, it's the very narrow tyre, it's that 32mm width and uh, that just shows you in a bit more detail there uh, how that's put together. And uh, we'll move on to the Ambrosio 4.0 wheel now. Now this is a really uh, clever bit of kit in the way it's put together. It's, uh, there's a lot of work actually in these wheels. Um, the tyres themselves are these nice squish squishy EPMD rubber, which is the same rubber used on car tyres. And there's actually um, 16 stainless steel bolts which hold the, wheel to hold the wheels together. And uh, there's eight on that side and uh, eight on that side and they are not self-tapping either they actually are into brass threaded inserts so it's a really high quality wheel um, and you can replace these tyres if, if you needed to and um, they're fully serviceable and the drive is transferred from this uh, aluminium casting gearbox here 
using an 18mm hex drive and the hex drive goes into a steel insert in the, uh, in the wheel there. So the drive is transferred directly into this insert and then there's a uh, bolt um, that holds the, uh, the wheel onto the shaft. So it fits onto the shaft uh, using that keyway. So if we look at the material weights, it's difficult on camera to really appreciate the difference uh, in the materials used. Um, so we'll weigh the, uh, weigh the wheels to see so you can get a feel on the camera for how different they are. So it's uh, 450 grams, so nearly, nearly one and a half kilos on the Ambrosio wheel. That's just one wheel. And uh, on the Osfana, if we pop, uh, pop the wheel itself, is uh, just under 400 grams. And then with the dust cover, you've got just over 500 grams. So there's nearly a kilo difference uh, in raw material used in these wheels, um, which should show you that there's quite a big difference in the build quality there. Um, how they perform on a flat surface, obviously on the turf, they're going to have a bit more grip, but on a hard surface, you can see these slides very, very easily for putting quite a bit of pressure on there. Slides. On the uh, Ambrosio flex tyre, when pressure is applied, it goes to this nice flat spot which increases the surface area contact with the ground and it really has got a lot of grip. You, I've never seen any robot mower on the market which has got such high performance tyres as this. So uh, they really, really do perform well. That flex makes such a difference in comparison to the two. There, you can put a great deal of weight down and it just uh, slides very, very easily. I'll bring them up uh, so you can see a bit closer how they're made. See the steel insert there, and these are the brass threaded inserts. And on this one, the, uh, the spiked wheel accessory can be sandwiched between the two wheel sections and bolted in, and they are self cleaning. As the I haven't got a spike to show you, but um, as the spike protrudes into the ground, when it comes past the uh, flat spot, it then cleans the spike. I'll show you close up the Fosfana wheel, that's the inside section, so that's the friction drive plate area. So I hope that's given you a, a better understanding of how the two wheels compare. Okay, moving on to the front wheels now. Both robots use two front wheels uh, that rotate caster style 360 degrees. Uh, if we start looking at the Husqvarna's, they have a 10 centimetre diameter by 3.2 mil foam rubber coated treads. Um, the axle is 8 mil stainless steel round bar, and that is fixed into uh, a plastic bush, which allows rotation but doesn't allow any vertical travel or suspension so these are actually fixed in place. When we look at the um, Ambrosio these also have 10 centimetre in diameter wheels but 4.5 centimetres wide so a bit wider and this is uh, EPMD rubber coated wheels and um, the actual uh, cages which the wheels are attached to is 30mm uh, uh, by 50mm so very, very substantial stainless steel uh, cages. We'll look at those in a bit more detail in a moment. I'll just turn that to the side. You can see uh, the cage that surrounds this wheel uh, is all in stainless steel. The, uh, the actual cage itself has uh, 12 mil of suspension, uh, but that's also coupled with the unique flex step design. So the deck itself has a further six centimetres of travel. So you've got the, the 12, centi to 12 mil of travel from the actual wheel, uh, coupled with the flex deck, which can follow contours and rough ground. Um, brilliant if you've got undulations or maybe it's some form of pasture that you're trying to turn into a lawn. And this will really help uh, tame uh, former meadow grass and turn it into nice, uh, nice lawn. It also keeps all four wheels firmly attached to the ground. I'll do a demonstration of that in just a moment. Uh, but you can see there the difference in the way that they're put together. Look at the wheel on the Husqvarna there. 
equivalent and then version 4.0. Okay, following on from the front wheels, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the FlexDeck feature on the 4.0 that I mentioned earlier. Now, this is a brand new technology which allows the front end of the robot to twist and follow undulations or contours of your ground. And that's especially good if you've got areas which are bumpy or uh, slopes, or maybe you're, you've taken on a piece of land that used to be grazing and you want to turn it into lawn. Having the ability for the robot to follow those contours without getting stuck is a really big advantage. Uh, what we've done is I've put a piece of AstroTurf down and made a very gentle bump in the, in the grass and just placed a book underneath here. It's about 1.5 centimetres um, and it just provides a very gradual hump. If I push the Husqvarna 430X over the hump, the uh, front left wheel is ridden up onto that now. You'll see it affects the stability of the robot quite dramatically because the two front wheels on this robot are fixed in place. They're, they're not free to travel up and down. So the, uh, the drive wheel is free to lift off the ground and traction can be lost. If I do the same demonstration with the flex deck, we'll watch, I don't know if you'll see it on camera, but as the wheel rides up onto that hump, the robot is completely stable but the deck at the front can twist slightly. The blade maintains a constant height from the ground and, uh, and can shape it to the contours, uh, whilst the dr rear drive wheels maintain that, that good stability. So I'll just drag that back off there and I'll show you on the Husqvarna again as that, uh, as that front wheel rides up over the bump. You can see how much it affects the stability. It really does, even a very small um, bump in the ground to really make that rock from side to side. I'll show you uh, from the front angle this uh, robot. As the drive wheel rides up, you can just see, just drag it back again, you see the front of the deck twisting as it goes over the hump, like that. But the robot is completely solid, and if the bump was bigger, the deck is free to ride up further keeping that nice shape and maintaining a constant contact with the blade of the ground. I hope you found that useful. In this section we're going to look at the blades on the two different mowers. We'll start with the Ambrosio 4.0. They've got a brand new cutting system on this one, totally different to the rest of the range. Um, the cutting mechanism on this one is made up of six fixed cutters. Each of them are made from stainless steel, um, one mil thick, and they have a uh, useful cutting edge of 12 millimetres. Times that by six gives you a total cutting surface area of 7.2 centimetres. And with every rev revolution of this uh, disc, you've got six contact points with the grass, so six cuts per revolution. The uh, distance from the tip of the blade to the outside chassis on this machine is 10 centimetres. That's how close you can get to a wall or a fence. The uh, blades are attached to a, an inner steel disc which is then attached to a four centimeter aluminium blade boss. Now we'll look at the blades on the Husqvarna 430X. Most of the Husqvarnas use the same cutting system. Uh, it's consisted of um, three of these two centimeter by 0.7mm uh, stainless steel swing blades and there's three of them attached to a plastic disc behind this aluminium sheet by Phillips screws. Now, although the blades themselves are uh, two centimetres long, or the sharpened surface is two centimetres long, actually only eight millimetres uh, protrudes from the disc as useful cutting um, area. So if you combine the protruding cutting area of each of these three blades, you've got a total uh, useful cutting surface of 2.4 centimetres. Uh, with each revolution of the disc, you've got three contact points with the blade, with the grass. So each time the disc revolves, you've got three, three blades coming across it. Now the distance from the uh, tip of the blade to the outside shell of the robot is 17 centimeters. So it's quite a big gap between the tip of the blade and the outside edge here. So along a wall or a fence, you've got uh, at least 17 centimeters of uncut grass. These blades uh, are recommended in the manufacturer's 
user manual should be replaced every three or four weeks depending on cutting conditions so you'll need to unscrew these blades and replace them every three to four weeks. The, uh, I forgot to mention uh, the life expectancy of the blades on the Ambrosio 4.0 they're uh, expected to last at least a full cutting season on one set um, looking how substantial they are I would assume that you might even get more life out of those depending on the conditions but they are extremely strong uh, and robust, they're a bit thicker than the Husqvarna's. Looking at the two robots side by side at the underneath, um, we can see on the Husqvarna machine at the top here you've got a couple of cables that hang down and enter through the bottom of the chassis through these grommets. They look a little bit vulnerable, um, maybe could get caught on edging or brambles or something like that but uh, they're uh, actually hanging down, it's a bit of a surprise. Um, not a really a lot else under here that's user uh, replaceable or um, accessible apart from the blades obviously just with the Phillips screws. The Looking down here the power switch for the robot is located underneath here. This is the carrying handle just uh, just below it and uh, that's the, the main power switch. This port here is for dealer service so if the robot goes in for repair or service then the dealer plugs his laptop in there. Now the battery on this model um, is 18 volt 5.2 amp hour lithium ion battery it's not user replaceable so at the end of the battery's working life it will need to go to an authorised Husqvarna dealer to be replaced. Right we'll take a look at the uh, Ambrosio 4.0 underside in a bit more detail. We'll start with the jointing system so this is the flex deck joint uh, it's made by two part cast aluminium with a bearing in the centre it's a really really smooth uh, feels extremely well made joint and it allows the whole top of the robot to pivot and follow those contours. Uh, looking around you can see the uh, cast aluminium gearboxes as they protrude through the side here. They're a planetary gear, um, extremely heavy duty, well made. Um, you can also see at the side of the deck here these holes, these are the uh, holes which allow the rainwater to filter through to help remove any uh, debris that's built up under here, so wet grass or leaves and the, the uh, rain coming through there can, can wash that away. Now the battery on this model is a, a 26 volt 8.7 amp hour lithium ion battery and this battery is actually user replaceable without any special tools um, you can just remove the four screws from here, the battery pulls out and uh, the customer can change that uh, themselves. This also forms part of their upgrade kit system. So if you've bought uh, a lower specification model for a smaller garden, you can buy an upgrade kit and the battery contains a Bluetooth chip which tells the robot what kit you've purchased and that will uh, change the software of the robot to allow it to cut a bigger lawn if you bought a bigger battery or if you've moved to a smaller property and the battery wears out you can buy uh, a cheaper battery and it will reduce the specification of the machine so very clever battery system on this model. Uh, here right at the bottom um, is a, a winter charging socket so that little uh, blue cap there can be removed and you can collect your, connect your power supply to it to charge it up over the winter in the garage or the shed that's quite a nice feature um, to charge the battery whilst it's in storage. Um, looking at the top of the robot here, uh, you can see the, uh, the bumper compression spring mechanism. That's what gives it that nice soft touch feel um, as it comes into contact with an object. Right, we'll finish up by looking at the power supplies for the base station and the, uh, the cable. Uh, so the Husqvarna 430X features a 26 volt uh, 4.2 amp power switch mode power supply. It's got two little wall mounts on it as you can see there. It's uh, IP rated and feels very sturdy and well made and uh, looks good quality. And then you've got the low voltage cable which takes the power from the power supply to the base station uh, here. This looks um, a lot like a speaker cable or doorbell wire um, not quite as, as, as substantial as I would have uh, imagined but um, there you go that's the uh, low voltage main power supply cable for the base station. On the Ambrosio 4.0 uh, we have this um, 8.2 amp hour 29 volt switch mode power supply in aluminium casing. 
Uh, it's got wall mounts uh, so it can be screwed to a wall and it's also uh, IP rated uh, for moisture protection. Feels very, very sturdy and um, probably uh, overkill for a robotic mower but uh, that's a good thing in some ways because it should last a long, long time. It looks extremely well made and good quality, reassuringly weighty. The cable on the, the 4.0 that takes the, the 29 volts to the base station is a much, much thicker than the Husqvarna. Uh, very, very sturdy cable. It's a uh, double insulator, so it's got two core inside with thick insulation and then this grey outer uh, PVC insulation there. So that's really, really substantial. And uh, one of the things that concerns me about the cable on the Husqvarna is if you were streaming around the base station and happened to catch that cable um, or in the garden, maybe it's in a, a flower bed, I think you could quite easily nick that or cut through it with it just being singularly insulated. Uh, so it's definitely a lot more substantial on the uh, Ambrosio. Uh, that brings us to an end. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it informative. Um, if you have, please give us a like on YouTube. And um, if you've got any questions, feel free to give us a call. We love talking about robots. Thank you.